pro wrestling show, man on man. We recap WWE Money in the Bank 2019, where Brock Lesnar won the Money in the Bank as the last entry plus the championship matches as well. Money in the Bank. They can mention we won women's tie, but what time she lost in Raw SmackDown report and our special predicted outcome for AEW Double or Nothing pay per view. As all the pro wrestling show starts right now. To the all new pro wrestling show. I'm your host, as always, Kitty Dix. Welcome in again. Join in the conversation using the hashtag pro wrestling here on Connect. Subscribe, hit that sub subscribe button. We love it. Thank you all for last, last week's episode where we drew over 400 views, the most views on Connect, the most, the highest rated pro wrestling show ever. Thank you out there for making that possible and keep on watching because I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm going to do it for you. And thank you for making that being the highest rated pro wrestling show and the highest rated Connect TV show ever. Wrestling fans are that. Wrestling does matter and you matter as well as fans. All right. Let's get to the Raw Wing Report on Monday Night Raw. Man, Monday Night Raw kicked off with a bang as the Money in the Bank winner Brock Lesnar made his appearance. You can call him now the Beast in the Bank. Brock made a shocking appearance at Money in the Bank at the last minute when he interrupted when Mustafa Ali was close, inches away to becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. And all of a sudden Brock Lesnar used to get pushing Mustafa Ali off the ladder, climbed the ladder, and got the briefcase and became Mr. Money in the Bank. And Brock Lesnar now earns himself a future championship match against either the WWE or Universal Champion. Now, Mike Cole had reiterated that if you're Seth Rollins, this is your worst nightmare. That you defeated Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. And now, Brock Lesnar comes back in the fold with a briefcase hanging over your head. You got to watch your back from ear to ear. You know that Brock Lesnar's coming. But then that didn't stop there as Kofi Kingston, the WWE champion, appeared on Raw 2 to want to step up the champ Brock Lesnar. Well, Paul Heyman, who's Lesnar's agent and advocate, said that everyone is trying to audition to go against Brock Lesnar for main event box, box office appeal. And um, Heyman said they'll make up their minds by the time the end of the show. We'll tell you in the end of the show what had happened. Plus, Ron Strowman went against Sami Zayn. These two was fighting over that spot that Brock Lesnar eventually won out of nowhere, where um, Sami Zayn won last week to earn Braun's spot. And Sami got attacked and money in the bank with Brock taking his spot. So, um, like I said, it's, it was a lot going on with that. Um, but uh, at the end, Ron Strowman wins over Sami Zayn. And um, Braun Strowman looking forward to his match at Super Showdown and Jetta against Bobby Lashley. So those two powerhouses will meet at Super Showdown in a one-on-one -on -one strength versus strength match. I'll tell you that right now. Also, the freak, Lars Sullivan, speaks. But ain't that weird that Lars on SmackDown now? He's appearing on Raw the Wild Card Rule with Exception. And Lars spoke, and then he got interrupted by Lucian House Party. Lucian House Party, which he quickly destroyed them one by one. Lars Sullivan got his um, point across. Also, Ricochet suffering the effects of the Money in the Bank. That men's that match went against Cesaro, who had picked a fight with Ricochet, and Cesaro dominated the match with backbreakers. And, um, you know, high spots by Ricochet. And at the end, um, Cesaro wins the match over Ricochet. One thing I can say about Cesaro, he's an underutilized talent that WWE is about to um, now tap into and see the potential he has. I think Mr. McMahon believes Cesaro doesn't have good mic skills, good promo skills, good in ring promo. So we'll see. He got the good in ring ability, but it's just 
he's lacking on good in ring promo. So Zaro might have to work on that. But Zaro is the rest. Like I said, it was years ago. I seen Zaro one time on Ring On, Ring On debut on TV for uh, National Audience. And Zaro impressed me that first day. I was like, wow, why ain't WWE signed? And then next month later, WWE signed. So we have to have a good eye for talent and stuff. Also, former. WWE champion AJ Styles come off the heel with his match against Seth Rollins in the Universal Tie Bout. Came a little bit short. He did his interview saying what I just said until Baron Corbin came around and uh, Baron Corbin um, slapped a AJ Styles, slapped Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin said, You're going to pay for that rather sooner rather than later. So um, I believe AJ Styles and Baron Corbin. That rivalry from SmackDown just got started. I didn't hear. Also, Alexa Bliss hosts the Moment of Bliss, where she has special guest Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch appearing on the show. Her and Becky talked about how Becky lost one belt and retained one one title. Becky still is the Raw Women's Champion, but she lost the SmackDown Women's Champion. We'll get to that a little bit later on the SmackDown Re Report on what's going on with that. But um, Lacey Evans still feel a little salty, came out there, along with the women's tag team champions, Iconic, and challenged um, Becky to a match. And Becky had Nikki Cross, who was like a, a, a mentor, a protege, and they asked Alexa Bliss to join in too. So it was a six-woman tag team match, women's champion, um, um, Becky Lynch, Alexa Bliss, and Nikki Cross against Women's Tag Team Champions Iconics and Lacey Evans. Um, Nikki Cross got the win. So, hey, let's see. There might be some telling. Nikki Cross and um, Alexa Bliss can make a good tag team against the Iconics on the Raw side. Well, on SmackDown side, they still got the Kabuki Warriors to be worried about whenever they get their title match and stuff. Also, former Tag Team Champions still revival went against former SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, in a tag team match. Now, we told you last a couple of weeks ago that this whole Thanksgiving, the Usos were making fun of the revival mannerisms where they caught them shaving and then pranking them with their little hot, you know, the little um, itchy stuff. And the revival got one up on the uh, Usos. So the revival... Picking up steam. I wish it was a tag team match, a tag team time match, but like, they're not doing with them with the tag team champions. That kind of make that, this should be the tag team title situation. I don't know what they're doing, so it's sort of like they don't, the Raw kind of lacking continuity on deck. All right, <laughs> speaking of lacking continuity, the hardcore legend Mick Foley came to Raw to introduce a new title. He called this title. The WWE 24-7 type. This is similar to the WWE Hardcore type, but they didn't want to show it as that being like hardcore. They wanted to go a little bit further. And um, he explained the rules of the match, explained the rules of the title, what the title premise, and bring a referee at all times. And the interesting note was he left the belt in the ring, and then he just, got superstars just came out there fighting to grab the title. And at all of a sudden, you had superstar like EC3, you had No Way Jose, you had um, the Good Brothers, Anderson Gallows, you had um, Drake Maverick, you had a whole list of superstars fight, but it came to one. It came to Tyson O'Neill grabbing the 24 7 title, becoming the first champion. And after that, Tyson was celebrating through the entry ramp, and he got. Rolled up by Robert Roode. Robert Roode became the champion. And um, Robert Roode was about to um, was standing there hesitant. And he ran and all the superstars ran after him. <laughs> and it was funny. It was that. I was like, man, that's not the uh, uh, At first, I'm like, man, it don't look like a pleasant belt. It doesn't look belt so. And um, I thought about it. I was like, all these superstars they got, they might well make some airtime for them. And, had them do some, and I guess this is the formal way to do it. So hey, I kind of like the, the premise of the 24-7 bill. And you won't believe when we talk on Hot Topics who came up with the idea for the 24-7. You won't, you'd be shocked who did. 
Plus, the Miz went against Drew McIntyre after Drew McIntyre was handpicked by Shane McMahon. Good, decent match back and forth. The match where Shane was distracting Miz after their battle with the steel cage match where Shane had um, defeated the Miz in, at Money in the Bank. And Shane um, got... I think he, he, he won by Miz was pulling off his shirt off or something. And he slipped off. His shirt got slipped. But he, he won the match without even jumping. So, like, uh, Miz lost that match. So, like, Miz kind of bounced him back and see what he's going to do from there. And five, and, um, at the, and then it was another 24-7, um, thing where our true was trying to hide Robert Wood because Robert Wood was trying to get away from all the rest of the superstars. And our truth was telling the superstars that he went that way, he went that way. And our truth, you know, did his part to help 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 Robert Wood get, you know, get to safety. And our truth turns around and attacks him and pins him to become the Trump himself champion. And he drives away. Man, our truth is smart. That's smart. That's smart about our truth. That's real smart. Also, in the main event, WWE Champion Kofi Kingston, Universal Champion Seth Rollins, they defeated Bobby Lashley and Baron Corbin. It was a good tag team match, back and forth, you know, where Kofi and Rollins attacked, trying to double team Lashley and double team Corbin. Corbin and Lashley trying to get the upcoming. And um, it's kind of weird that Lashley doesn't have Leo Rush with him, but it's kind of, you know, Let's see what they go with that, but you know, the area um Kofi Kingston pit. Um I think it was a note. I think yeah, it was um yeah, Kofi Kingston won the match. And at the end, Rock Lesnar shows up surrounding the ring and he tries to grab both world champions' attention and um he walks away with both world champions are still pondering and wondering like who you gonna challenge? They'll mention who you gonna challenge. So it was kind of like Rocks was playing the um, way down the psychological thing. Well, that does it for the Raw Ring Report. Let's move over to the SmackDown Ring Report. The SmackDown Ring Report kicked off with Shane McMahon asking Elias, why did he get the job done against Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank? And like I said, he was distracted. Shane said, there ain't no excuse. Shane said, okay, I'm going to give you one more time to make up for yourself. And you'll get him later on tonight in the main event. So Shane booked the match. Elias was going to raise on SmackDown. Big E returned from injury. It's a little small money. Big E was saying he was going to be out for two years. I didn't know. I didn't believe that whatsoever. But you know, Big E is being Big E being sarcastic. Right. He reunited with his New Day brothers, WWE Champion Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. You know, after that, KO, who was still a little bit bitter and angry, that he didn't become the WWE Champion after defeating Kofi Kingston at Money in the Bank, after attacking Kofi and trying to befriend Kofi and um, trying to be an uh, honorary member of New Day. And Sami Zayn came out well, so that, that that's a talent right there. They cut this promo and the Sammy Lang was gonna go against Kofi later on um, in the match. So, you know, they kinda left that in the obvious. Speaking of that, two men who put their body to risk, Ali and Abrani went against each other. They both were in the main the bank ladder match. Big up for both of them. Ali was close, inches away, but I told you earlier in the Raw report what had happened. Ali was this close. Abrade he, like I said, they're two stars of tomorrow. I'm telling you right now, I, Ali and Andrade, well, Andrade could be a future Intercontinental Champion. Andrade will get a shot at the Intercontinental Championship at um, Super Showdown. So that's kind of, um, you know, like, but the match between Andrade and Ali was good and solid, fundamental, bell to bell match that both of them hit high spots. So, um, you know, expect that, that, um, you know, the match can be good. I, I think it, Ali won the match. I believe that Ali won the match. Ali, I don't know. One of them two, I don't know. 
Keep it wrong. Okay. You get something next. Also, Mandy Rose went against Carmella. And it ended in no context. And Mandy Rose was close two years ago to win Miss Money in the Bank, but she got pushed off by the beta. We'll talk about that later. Um, she went against the former Money in the Bank winner, Carmella. And um, it ended in no context. Carmella earlier was trying to help Truth distract him being like a drag queen or something like that to some form of fashion. And I too could put off three in that. <laughs> but um the superstars went out there, chased our truth to the back. Our truth ran away with Carmella and they tried to run out the building. It was the most funniest skip skip ever. The big up the lady on that. That was funny. That was super funny to me. WWE champion Kofi Kingston defeated Sami Zayn but, and was distracted at the end by Paul Heyman. Heyman came to SmackDown, which he don't really make an appearance. Paul Heyman makes an appearance on Monday, now on Tuesday, but this is a full rare um, occasion. And he teased that Brock was coming. He had a briefcase. Then when Brock was going to come, we get Kofi. But nevertheless, Dolph Ziggler came and ambushed the champion and attacked Kofi Kingston. I uh, know with, with a chair and left Kofi laying, and Kofi can't go to the pyramids. So it's sort of like Dolph Ziggler has some access to ground with Kofi Kingston, but we don't know what. But uh, like we found out later on that Dolph Ziggler explained his actions, and he felt that Kofi Kingston took his spot when they was at the elimination chamber. So Kofi Kingston ran the gauntlet, and that's what Dolph was like. That should have been me. He's going to write the role. And he's going to do so at Super Showdown against Kofi. So they had to write that in there. So, uh, it'll be a time match up there. So he did explain why he did what he did. Also, speaking of explaining what he did, Elias sings the Roman Reigns on top of the um, truck, the production truck. And Roman Reigns not bothered, unbothered about it. Roman Reigns will face Elias later on in the show. Speaking of that, Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch made another appearance for SmackDown where she teamed with newly crowned SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley, who won Miss Money in the Bank. And on the same night during the Becky Lynch Charlotte match, Charlotte beat Becky Lynch due to the help of Lacey Evans through that time back for a long time, the match before. And uh, Charlotte got hit by Bayley. Bailey and Bailey became the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Bailey is the second woman to do so behind this year. So win the title, win the briefcase, and then cash it in and win the title. So Bailey is Bailey is on top of the end of the world. I feel like Bailey's at the right show with SmackDown because Bailey can um take that and um not be stagnant. And Bailey has a good opportunity to showcase her own skills. And some people say that was a dig at Sasha, which it could be, but we don't know for sure. We don't know for fact, fact or fiction. But you know, you you out there believe what you want to believe and read the reports you want to read. So, um, Bailey won, but the the women's champions, you know, won their matches. So these rivalries will continue on. I expect them roll. Now we said that twenty four seven championship can appear throughout. All brands of the league. They made an appearance on SmackDown as R Truth was trying to leave and he got pinned, a, a tip pinball at Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal pinned R Truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, everybody was gunning for R Truth. You know, R Truth ran away from, from it again, from the superstars. Speaking of that, Triple H and Randy Orton had their historic history. That they're going to play out again for Super Showdown in Saudi Arabia once again. Um, like I said, they started their days of evolution all the way to uh, Agent Orton to them competing with singles. So it's a rivalry new with student versus teacher once again. We have that moment where I used to be, a, I am a fan of Triple H and I am a fan of Randy Orton and that work. And that few will be together and work together. So it was good. All right. The Money in the Bank rematch between Roman Reigns versus Elias. Shane McMahon 
it was in Elias' corner. Shane got involved back and back and back and forth. But at the end, um, Roman Reigns pit Elias, and out of nowhere, Roman Reigns tried to get his hands on Shane, where them two would meet at Super Showdown, one on one, Reigns versus Shane. But Drew McIntyre rescued Shane by hitting the Claymore kit. So Drew McIntyre is a sheriff policy for Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon looked at Elias like, hey, you sure shooting policy now. Just like that, you <laughs> damage me. <wins. laughs> so, hey, it is. So, that does it for the SmackDown Ring Report. When we return, we're going to have hot topics where our WWE Diva passes away. Plus, we're going to have predicted outcome for double or nothing. That's a fantastic card that you should be able to see. You see it live on pay per view and any other social media platforms. Yeah. Stay tuned for more Boris and Glad you're here. Thank you all for watching the Pro Wrestling Show for this week as we talk about hot topics. All right, hot topic this week. Now, many of you know that um, this past week we lost um, Eva, uh, a true diva, WWE 2005 Deep Search winner, Ashley Mazzaro, dead at the age of 39. Ashley died of parent suicide. So we here at Pro Wrestling Show want to wish her and her family, you know, our prayers, our condolences to them in this grieving moment. But we want to show a reaction video where a whole list of WWE divas, former from the past, present, want to show Ashley's daughter, Gracie, Lexi, I meant to say, that they love and support. Watch this. We care about you. And we wanted to come together and to let you know that you are not alone. Some of the women that worked with your mother have sent in a video. We weren't able to get everybody in time for this because we wanted to get this out as soon as possible. But this is a message from some of them. We love you. Hey, Lexi, this is Mickey James. I met you when you were a little girl. I just wanted to take a moment to reflect and like remember um your mom i'm so sorry your mom was so special because she was so beautiful and she had a true and like genuine soul and her laughter was infectious and i wish i could have been there and i wish i could be there for you and at least if nothing else we can all be here for you and allow you into this sisterhood. I hope you use this to do something really special. And, and I know it hurts and I know you can't see it now, but eventually one day you will. And until that moment, if you need someone, we're here. Lexi, your mom was the kind of girl that she'd walk into a room and she'd light it up. I remember when she first started coming around the locker room and her eyes were so wide and she was so excited about the road ahead and she just bulldozed us all over with her energy. She's the kind of person that would hug you when she first met you and she made us all smile. I remember seeing that same smile from her and her eyes would light up. Um, 
every time she talked about you, every time she mentioned your name, and she loved you so much. Hey Lexi, this is Gail. We've actually never met, but I hope one day we can. And I just wanted to send you a message to let you know how much your mom meant to me and all the other girls that have ever crossed your path or worked with her. She was always such a warm, happy, kind human being. And we just want to let you know that we're here for you, for anything that you need, and that you are part of our sisterhood as she was. And I just wanted to send my deepest condolences and my love. Hi, Lexi. I'll never forget the times your mom brought you on the road and you just came in that locker room full of fire, full of energy, like you own the place. And um, you had the biggest, most addictive smile on your face all the time. And I know exactly where you got that from. You got that from your mother. And I'm sorry. I just want you to know I'm sure you've heard the saying that, you know, all of us girls, we share a sisterhood and we might not have always talked. We might not have spoke every week or every month, but there is a mutual respect we all have for each other. And you shared something that not many people get to share. And I want you to know that from this point forward and forever, if you need somebody to talk to, a shoulder to cry on, room to stay in, I'll always be there. Like, so your mother had a way of always make everybody feel like they're the most important person in the world. It didn't matter if you were a friend or a fan or a complete stranger. She wanted to make you feel important. So I can only imagine how much she loves you. She's always going to watch over you. As a mother, I know that. So even though she may not be there physically, she's definitely there in spirit. There are a lot of people that are there for you whether it be us divas or former wrestlers or friends of hers. Ashley gave a lot to everyone around her, and we'd love to give it all to you. Hi, Lexi. It's Candice Michelle. I just want you to know how much so many of us, of the wrestlers in the circle of the sisterhood, are thinking of you, uh, that we're supporting you, how much we loved your mom. I know what it's like to lose your mom. And it sucks. And it's the worst feeling ever. And I wish I could tell you anything to just take that pain away. But all I can offer you is that I'm here for you. And I want you to know that you get to make a choice in this time. When I lost my mom at 23, it was the hardest thing I ever experienced in my life. And at that moment, I had to make a choice whether to rise up or let it take over me. And the best thing that happened was I felt her love inside my heart every single day. I want to thank you and thank your mom for all that you do and all that you will do. I love you, Lexi. And we're all here for you. Hi, Lexi. Uh, I never had the pleasure of meeting you but I did have the pleasure of meeting your mom. I was super nervous. She was like the coolest diva to have ever existed. Upon meeting her, she was amazing and warm and had this infectious personality. In an instant, went from being nervous to feeling like we were friends and had been friends for a really long time. I just want you to know that my thoughts, my prayers, and my love is with you. Hi, Lexi. I just want to take this moment to say I'm so, so sorry for the loss of your mother. She was very dear to me. And in the land of fake and phonies, she was a true blue friend and was there for me. A lot of times when nobody else was. My heart goes out to you. And I'm always going to have you and your mom in my prayers. Just sending you love and light. Hi, Alexa. My name is Kat. I think of Ashley walking into a convention and seeing her and just feeling happy that she's there and just her putting a smile on my face. And I know a lot of people are feeling the same way. And so I want to say, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. 
and I am sending you all my love as well. Hi, Lexi. Um, this is Lisa Marie here. I'm Lisa Marie Varen, also known as Victoria. Um, I'm wearing my hat because um, Ashley always wore a hat like this. Your mom was an amazing woman, sweet, kind, the laugh of the locker room. Oh my gosh. Always a beautiful smile. In fact, your mom taught me how to bleach my um, teeth before shows with hydrogen peroxide. But um, all of us divas, knockouts, um, all your all the people that were in her life, you have someone to talk to. Um, we are all here for you. Um, my prayers and my condolences to your family. Um, but you have us to lean on. So just don't don't ever feel alone. Okay, love you very much, Lexi, and um, you take care. My love and, and and condolence to your family, okay? All right, take care, baby. Hi, Lexi. I wanted to share with you my favorite memory of your mom. Um, I remember it so clearly. My favorite memory of your mom is when she was talking to me about you. She loved you so much. She gushed over you, just gushed over you. And I know that I'm not the only one that she did that with. Uh, she just had this sparkle in her eye when she talks about you. And that is what I remember the most, actually. She obviously has like this huge, huge spirit. Her love and her heart was so full of you that that is when I could see she was the closest to where she is now, and that's being an angel. I wanted you to know that, and I love you. Lexi, I met your mother in 2006. My personality was very different than the rest of the girls, and she totally embraced it. I've gone through a lot of tragedies in my life, and um, I've learned the best way to deal with them is to channel that pain and sadness to thinking about the amazing memories you had with your mom, because that's what your mom would want you to do. She would want you to honor her and go after your dreams and be a fighter and live the best life you can live. I love you and I miss you. And for anybody who's watching, please uh, donate to help her daughter out. I know Alexa was the center of her universe. Hey Lexi, Trish Radis here. Um, I was your mom's first wrestling wife. And we use that term in this business when that's the person that you ride together with, you work together with. I didn't know what to expect. And I was met by this hungry, ambitious, excited girl who was just wide-eyed watching it all unfold in this new world. And I'm proud to say that, you know, I was there to help her navigate in the very beginning. I just want you to know that your mom was very loved by not only, of course, as you know, her punks out there, which we saw from the moment she stepped foot into that world, but the girls, all these girls that have worked with her over the years, you've touched, you know, she's touched all of our lives in a certain way. And, you know, at this point, she's brought us all close together. All of us are, are bonded by this business. Call us your aunties, whatever you want to do. We are all here from you. And I hope one of these messages resonates with you. One of these girls' personalities, just like in the wrestling world, there's some, someone that always clicks with someone in the audience. So I hope one of us clicks for you. You know our, our number is readily available, and we'd love to hear from you because we've been through this journey together, and we knew your mom, and we shared some very special times together. So just want to let you know that we're here for you. We love you through your mom, and we love your mom very much. And know that we're always here to support you. Thanks, Lexi. This is in memory of your mother. She touched all of us. She was really, really special. And we know that you have that light. I remember you, Lexi, from ringside. You were such a sweet, sweet girl. And you've grown up to be such a beautiful girl. And I know that you have a heart of gold. So Lexi, I am so sorry for your loss, but we are hoping that this makes you feel just a little bit better. And again, to know how much love that you truly have behind you. There's a sisterhood that ties all of the women in the pro wrestling industry together. A bond that is for life. 
And it's that sisterhood that has so many of us just incredibly devastated by the loss of a sweet, kind, amazing human way too soon. And it's our mission to not let Ashley's death go down in vain. She made a mark in this world, and she made a mark on all of our hearts. We really want her daughter, Lexi, to know how much not only that we love Ashley, but also how much we love Lexi, and we want to take care of her. We want, we want to make sure she has a fighting chance at life. Ashley was such a sweet human being, and I think, you know, it, it stings extra hard because we can all see a a piece of us in her and we've all been there we've all had that moment of just sadness where we just want to give up and it breaks my heart that I wasn't there for her but there is something that we can do now and we can make sure that her daughter has a fighting chance at life so please help us we really want if you've ever been touched by Ashley ever as a fan as a friend as someone maybe you just followed on social media and she made you smile, please help us in letting her daughter know her mark was made in this world. Even if it's only $5 that you can donate, please help us. We're on a mission and we are not going to stop until we do Ashley good. What a heartfelt tribute right there from all the WWE Divas, as you know, numerous WWE Divas, such as Trish Gratz, Lita, Tori Wilson, Maria, um, Gail King, Gail Kim, all of them showing their respects to Ashley, who they worked with so much. And um, Ashley Mazzaro made history. She she made him be in the Diva Circle, so that's a good, rare accomplishment, you know. So our prayers and our condolences are with Ashley as our family at this group time. Also, um, Pat, you know Pat, he was never. They said that he quit AEW due to creative differences. AEW has got this guy up. They haven't got the ground going to come up this weekend. And now Pat just quit. But they showed the match with Pat and Heyman. You can see it on YouTube on their AEW page. I think they was that was gonna be a good match, but you know, hey, Pac was saying he don't want to be screwed and all like that. But hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, Rey Mysterio suffers an injury, and um, during his match with Samoa Joe, but now the future of the United States Championship is in question. So next week they will know when the what they're gonna do with the United States title for for a Raw. Speaking of Raw. You know, Raw, on the third hour, they want to be more edgy and they want to be more darker because UFC Network is concerned about the numbers and stuff like that. Well, you know that we told you earlier the 24 7 title has been in effect. Guess who pitched the idea for 24 7 title? The UFC Network did. Exactly. They came up with suggestions on how to get this and that. And WWE obliged. Now that's why we see now Raw a little bit darker. 
a little bit had a different edge to the feeling. So they want to bring something new, different, exciting. Although they're trying to bring back the attitude there or not, but hey, each is on. Speaking of that, um, Jordan Grace signs with Pat Rest. I mean, people reported that Jordan Grace had signed with Pat Rest, but now, or this past week, Jordan Grace didn't sign with Pat Rest. She was working uh, without a contract. Now she's working with a contract. So, Impact kind of like they went over their heads and they kind of like over, over, they went over sight, overlooked. Let's hope they get that together. So, speaking of that, we talked about Killer Cross when we did his release and stuff, but now they're saying that Scarlett Bordeaux, who is likely his girlfriend, wants her release, but they're not going to release her, but they're saying that the contract ends in the summer. So, we'll see what that's going to go down with that. You know, ending up and stuff. And finally, now there's been reports that CM Punk um, trying to show up at this um, dump, but CM Punk quietly came and denied it. Said, "No, I'm not showing up to double or nothing." So you can put those rumors to rest, put those to bed, and stuff like that. So, so it's up. We'll, we'll see. If they get him, that's big. They can be big. Ten right now. All right, that is hot topics this week. Let's get to it. Let's get to a special predict the outcome for AEW presents double on them. This is the first AEW event under their banner. AEW is going to have all these matches. And let's get started with one match the Casino Battle Royal. It was supposed to be called the Over the Budget Battle Royal. Now we have the participants in the Battle Royal as it is. It's called Sunny Kiss. Brandon Cutler, many of you may know Sonny Kiss from Lucha Underground and dudes at that, 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 um, um, that feminine stuff. I'll say it feminine, feminine stuff. H. Romero, many of you may know from, from MLW, AC Baby, Glacier, many of you may know Glacier from WCW days. Brian Pillman Jr., son of Brian Pillman is in the match. Sunny Days is in the match. MJL, my um, MJL, I feel like he's gonna be a top star. I feel like you know MJL is the type of person that's kind of cocky, arrogant, the plays to the T. So you know, watch out for MJL. Joey Janela is in the Battle Royal. Justin Thomas, Billy Gunn, Jimmy Havoc. Michael, Nat- Michael Nassada is in it. Jungle Boy, son of the late great Luke Perry, is in this match. Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, uh, Luke Shiraz, um, Sean Spears, who was uh, Ty Gilgen, is in the match, and more to be now. Now, there was an interesting caveat this past week that the winner of this battle royal, whoever wins this battle royal, the short man over the top of battle royal, will receive a future AEW World Championship match and will face the winner of the Chris Jericho Kenny Omega match. That's that's high stakes. That's that's something that's huge. That's huge. I'm telling you, that's huge. This is going to be whoever wins this. I, it got to be. I want to say. Um, Hey man page, we didn't say we didn't, he, he, he don't have an opponent, so it would be perfect for Hey man page to end this match and um go for the um championship. I, I'm gonna put my money on Hey man page. Put my money on hey man page. Also, Kip Sabian versus Sammy Cavallo. Many you may know Sammy Cavallo. Sammy Cavallo um has a YouTube channel. So Sammy Cavallo, um, I would say Sammy keeps saving will win his match. Also, best friends, Chuck Taylor, Trip Burrell, who's in Ring of Honor, now is in AEW, goes against Angelico and Jack Evans, who were members of Lucha Underground. You know, I'm, I'm gonna go with best, I'm gonna go with the High Flyers, best, the, um, and Jericho and Jack Evans, because they, they, they need to win. They need to win. Also, six women tag team match. 
Aja Khan. Um, don't know the other women name. I don't want to get it wrong, but they're trying to get something wrong and buy shit. Somebody coming at my throat. So you you see right here, I think Aja Khan team will win. Speaking of tag teams, um, the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson versus the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon and Phoenix for the Triple A World Tag Team Championship. I want to say the Lucha Brothers will win against the Young Bucks. I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they win. Also, uh, Triple Threat match. Rick Baker versus Nia Rose versus Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray. Now Kylie Ray comes from Reality of Wrestling. Rick Baker comes from Ring of Honor, and Nia Rose comes from something else. I don't want to even um something else in in the general world or something like that. But um, Nia, um, I want to say Doctor Rick Break Baker's on this match. This one I'm gonna go with Doctor Rick Baker's on. And more tag team action. SoCal Uncensored, Christopher Daniels, Frank Kazarian, and Scorpio Sky versus Strong Hearts. And a six man tag team match. Go with SoCal Val in this one and have, I'll have, um, Scorpio Sky to pick the pinfall. One, two, three. That's it. Now we got through all those important, the two main event matches that people want to see that's going to steal the show. Cody, Versus Dustin Runnels, one on one, you, um, generation versus generation. Both come from the lawns of the American dream. Dusty Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes children made a name for themselves in the WWE. Now want to make the name for themselves in AEW. I think Dusty Rhodes would be proud today to see both his boys wrestling. He'll hate David wrestling, yet, but he'd be proud to see them make their own destiny and make go by their own terms. I'm going with Cody. After Cody said that it's the he wants to kill the attitude era and he leaves his app where Dustin is part of the era where Dustin is famously known as Gold does and made an error mark in the attitude era and Cody wants to kill that last remnant of the attitude era that's coming into AEW. So with that, and this, you, you, you would think there's more tattoo era stars in it too. As I believe, I firmly believe the main event is Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. Now, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega have fought in not in U.S. soil, but this time they're gonna fight in U.S. soil in Las Vegas, where the first time was in Japan, but this time. It's one on one. Um, Jericho, Omega got uh, access to ground with each other. But at the end, I want to go with my gut is telling me Chris Jericho is going to win this match. Because it's like Cody and Bill, it's, it's new era versus generation versus generation. New era versus attitude era. Because Jericho comes from the attitude era, just like this one. You know, Chris Jericho will win. And he will face the winner of the Battle Royal, which I said will be Heyman Page. Jericho and Heyman Page will battle to meet for the AEW Championship, which is a historic title. And I will, I will want them to put it on Page, but then you want someone like a established star like Jericho, like how Impact did, but they started the Impact title and put it on the current angle. And we became the angle title. Now, now I want that AEW title to have some representation and have an established star like Chris Jericho win it. But I won't pay me a pace to the world champion too, but I think Jericho's going to do it and he's going to win. So that does it. Um, all, double or nothing. AEW coming your way from Las Vegas, Nevada at, at the um, Seizures Palace, MGM Grand Arena, I would say. And it's going to be big. Um, like I said, and speaking of that, Ric Flair had had undergone surgery and he had successful surgery. Ric Flair kicked out from, from surgery once again. He coming out, he's going to come out better and recover. So that does it for the Pro Wrestling Show. Thank you all once again for making this, making last week's episode the high view show 
on Connect. We have view, views on Pro Wrestling Show. On the show is history. We want to thank you. And we hope to see you next time here on the Pro Wrestling Show next week. See you later.